small industrial robotics, the gripper, it's the most classic form of end of arm tooling. And the modern cobot world, of course, the gripper has to be as user safe as the robot itself. I'm with Tom Reek, he's vice president of sales for Shunk. Uh, Tom, uh, cobots, we're next to one right now, they're getting bigger, they're able to swing a heavier mass, but you still have to have a gripper that will keep the user safe. Exactly, but prior to now, in most cases when we're having to have an operator in close proximity to a robot, like in this situation here, we are limited to a low force, typically 140 newtons or less is the roughly the acceptable range for a gripper, but it allows the, uh, somewhat limits the, how much work piece that we can handle. So moving on from there, Shunk developed a new gripper. It's the largest force certified collaborative gripper um, that enables us to work instead of in that one to two pound range, we can work now in the five to 10 pound workpiece range and handle it safely for the operator. Now to be clear, at, at that range, you're talking about forces which could potentially be a pinch point or, or a source of injury. Exactly, so once you're handling parts that the way up in that area, you have to have forces that exceed that normal 140 newtons. Um, so the way that we go about that is we eliminate that pinch point by using the jaws to pre-position uh, before clamping on the part. And we use force feedback sensing in the jaws to make sure that if an operator gets their fingers in the way while the jaws are being pre-positioned, that the gripper doesn't grip with the full force onto the operator. Well, that's an interesting strategy. So it sounds like uh, the essence of it is that as long as there's potential for a pinch point, it acts like a soft touch gripper and uses a different algorithm when it, it hits the geometry it expects to see. That's exactly right. So once the, the fingers are close to the contact point of the part within a couple of millimeters, we, it's safe to assume that a hand would not be possible to be in the way and then the gripper is safe to go in and grip at its full grip force. And what applications do you expect will be early adopters of this technology? Uh, of course, we think of pick and place, think of general assembly, pharma, food. Those same applications just expanded. So now that we're not limited to the, the lighter weights, we can move on and pick up heavier, uh, heavier objects uh, just more and uh, more broadly, into, uh, but with also the very similar applications that we're doing now. Uh, Tom, we're next to a Yaskawa cobot in this case. Uh, many of the manufacturers, all the majors have cobots now. Uh, is this adaptable to other manufacturers as well? Yes, so we designed the gripper to work easily with all different manufacturers of cobots. Uh, Tom, the, the more I think of it, the more I think that cobots, of course, have been around for several years now. It never occurred to me that you could put an end of arm tool on a cobot, which no longer renders it legally a, a, a device you can use without guarding. Well, that's, that's right, and generally what we've been doing to meet those needs when those applications arise is that in the past what uh, happens is that you add external sensors surrounding the cobot where standard grippers pick and grip the parts in areas where operators can't be in close contact with the robot. And so when parts are picked up and delivered, um, even using a cobot, they have to be uh, picked from a point where an operator can't be close by. Now with a gripper like this, you can. Tom Reek at Shunk with a gripper technology which allows a cobot to truly be safe in every aspect of its operation.